It's my proud privilege to introduce Dr. Santosh Kunawar, Director of Medical Services, Center for Sight, and uh, Champion Oculoplastic Surgeon, and Director of the National uh, Retinoblastoma Center at uh, Hyderabad. Welcome, thank, sir. Thank you, Devendra. Um, with your vast experience of almost 20 years of managing and pioneering retinoblastoma care, mm -hmm. what would you think have been the change in the trends that you've seen over these years? I think uh, there's a lot, lot that has changed. Earlier when I was a resident, the focus used to be on somehow preserving life and many children wouldn't survive despite what was considered the gold standard of treatment at that time that was enucleation. So we would simply enucleate children and leave them there because we did not know which child would develop metastasis and which child wouldn't because there was no evidence at that time. So we thought we would do a very good surgery and leave them but about 30-40% of them ultimately died because they would develop metastasis on which we did not have any control over. So what changed was the um, understanding that there is something called high risk factor which we can identify by histopathology following enucleation. So when we adapted that particular element of our management of retinoblastoma care where we would examine the eyes more thoroughly on pathology, elicit risk factors for metastasis and treat them additionally with adjuvant therapy, they started having much le less chance of developing metastasis. In fact, it improved survival by 20%. So that was the impact that it had. That was one. Second is that earlier we would not put implants when we enucleated, so poor cosmosis parents would be discouraged in getting their children operated because they wouldn't have good cosmosis. Now that we have primary implant for all situations, I think we are doing much well in terms of cosmosis, that is the cosmetic element of it. So third understanding was conservation. Initially, no, over a period of time it did change, 50% of patients would get enucleation done, then 30%, then 25%, now it's less than 5% of children who undergo primary enucleation because we have uh, other eye conserving treatments such as initially intravenous chemotherapy and focal therapy, now intra-arterial chemotherapy has much changed the picture. And what has been your experience with the National uh, Referral Centre for Retinoblastoma vis-à-vis -vis the comprehensive nature of care that you provide over there? Right, so when somebody has retinoblastoma, they want to be managed comprehensively. You know, you don't want to kind of just do say UA and send the child over to an oncologist, from there the child go to a geneticist, from there to a pathologist, that's, that's fragmented care. But if you have everything under one roof or if you can provide all services by visiting consultants in each specialty on the day that child comes, then the logistics would become much uh, you know, compact and uh, the care becomes much concentrated. So that's, uh, that is the idea of having uh, comprehensive care centers where everything is available under one roof with which you can take care of your children very well. The compliance increases, the dropout rate decreases, and uh, there is overall uh, coordination between each member of the team. Fantastic. We know that you've really spearheaded that effort, and we wish you all the best with that and the future. Thank you so thank, much for being here. Thank you, Devendra. It's, it's such a pleasure to be in Moscow. Thank you so much.